Okay, so Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 48, is the inception of the church age, where the Holy Ghost is now given and is a seal of the Spirit unto the day of redemption. And it's introduced first as given by, the, by and detailed by Jesus Christ Himself in Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, first to the Jews in Jerusalem and Judea, it will eventually go to the ones in Samaria, and then finally unto the uttermost parts of the earth and or to the Gentiles. Now what's noteworthy in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 2 verse 37 and 38 where Christ, or where the Apostle Peter states, uh, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What's interesting to note is that he's telling the Israelis to repent, and that repentance is in relationship to the fact that they, as a body of people, were guilty of crucifying the Lord of glory. Peter says, Ye by wicked hands ye have taken, and ye have crucified the Lord of glory. Acknowledge him as your Messiah, repent of your disbelief as an Israelite under the law that you were guilty of crucifying your Messiah, and now identify with him through baptism. And if you identify with the resurrected Jesus Christ, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the message to the Israelites in Acts 2, verse 37-38. As we move through this time chart now, eventually we're going to see a Gentile proselyte convert a Gentile proselyte convert by the name of Nicholas. Nicholas in Acts chapter 6 is described among the company that he is with as being filled with the Spirit. Okay, he's filled with the Spirit of God and uh, outside of those parameters uh, he had been subject unto the Acts 2.37 message because remember Peter had not yet opened. He was given the keys there in Matthew chapter 16, verse, verses 18 and 19, and he was to open up the door unto the Jews in Acts chapter 2. He opened up the door to the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8, and we see eventually that he will open up the door in Acts chapter 10. And of course, the book of Acts is a chronological book that takes you systematically through each phase of the deliverance of the gospel message. So in Acts chapter 6, we see a proselyte. He's not a proselyte under the law. He's filled with the Spirit of God. He is a proselyte under the conversion message of Acts 2, 37, 38. I suspect he may very well have been there on the day of Pentecost. And in either case, he responds to that message. And he's filled with the Holy Ghost. And he's a proselyte. Now eventually, we move to Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip goes down zealously, he preaches the gospel to the Samaritans. Uh, they respond, they, can, they, they, uh, they are water baptized, they believe they're water baptized, but they don't receive the Spirit until Peter and John come down. And when Peter and John come down, they identify with the party's belief, they lay hands on this party, and after they do that, those parties then receive the Holy Ghost. The pattern is identical to Acts 2, 37 and 38. These were northern Jews. They were Samaritans. Uh, God views them as Jews. He only breaks down the human race into, into two parties. Jews or Gentiles. When I say Jew, I mean in a collective sense, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. I'm speaking in a generic sense. Though Jew, the word Jew actually stems from the tribe of Judah, uh, Paul uses the word Jews uh, in a generic sense to describe collectively the 12 tribes in your New Testament on numerous occasions. So that's what, I'm with, what, I, what I mean when I say Jews. So in Acts chapter 8, in Acts chapter 8, uh, that conversion takes effect. They follow the exact same order of Acts 2, 37, 38 to receive the Holy Ghost. They identify with their resurrected Messiah and then when Peter and John come down, 
they baptize, uh, they're, they're already baptized, they identify, identify with these parties, and then they receive the Holy Ghost. That brings us finally to the last group to enter into the body of Christ on a collective sense, that being you and I as Gentiles. Remember, prior to this, the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 that we, namely Gentiles, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, we were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. He was not our Messiah. <laughs> He's the Jewish Messiah. So there's nothing to identify with in Christ prior to, to His uh, resurrection because we were aliens from that relationship. That's why we don't get baptized until after we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Once we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, we were baptized by one spirit into one body, namely the body of Christ, and then as an act of obedience as believers, not as a necessity for our salvation, we then act out of obedience and identification with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, Romans chapter 6, in obedience to the charge of Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19, to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and to observe all things whatsoever He's commanded us. So here is where you and I need to mark our Bible, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 is really the beginning point, the beginning point for the Gentile in the New Testament. This is our beginning. This is the Gentile beginning, Acts chapter 10. So we do understand, based on what Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 and 9 states, and that the Apostle Peter, James, and John get established as the Apostles to the circumcision, and the Apostle Paul then later gets confirmed as the Apostle to the Gentiles. And uh, so now, this closes the chapter on Peter's involvement in terms of the Gentile body of people in a, in, a, in a broad sense. The Apostle Paul now takes over that responsibility. Now, uh, those references are found in Romans chapter 11, verse 13, and in Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 to 9. Read them very carefully. And so we come here to... Uh, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul now writes the letters to the churches. And from the book of Romans right through to the book of Philemon, those are the Pauline letters. And that specifically is the revelation with, with respect to the Gentile body of believers in the church age. That is specific to you and I. That's directed to us. So when Paul has been given the revelation of the gospel to the Gentiles in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he states how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And then Paul reaffirms the, the differences between the gospel to the circumcision versus the uncircumcision, as detailed in a previous video in Acts chapter 18 and 19, when the Apostle Paul confronts John's disciples, John's disciples in Acts chapter 19, we see in chapter 18, Aquila and Priscilla, they take Apollos aside, they expound unto him the way of God more perfectly, Apollos, having only preached the baptism of John, was, was, was corrected by both Aquila and Priscilla. In Acts chapter 19, the Apostle Paul uh, reestablishes that same truth when he meets John's disciples, that's John the Baptist's disciples, in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, he says, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, We have not so much as heard whether there be in the Holy Ghost. And he said, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. That's the resurrected Christ Jesus. Not the one who walked and offered the kingdom. Not the one who offered the kingdom who was rejected. No, this is the resurrected Jesus 
Christ.